Section twenty two of Wessex Poems by Thomas Hardy. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Libby Gone. The Alarm, eighteen o three. See the Trumpet Major. In memory of one of the writer's family, who was a volunteer during the war with Napoleon. In a ferny byway near the great South Wessex Highway, a homestead raised its breakfast smoke aloft. The dew damps still lay steamless, for the sun had made no skyway, and twilight cloaked the croft. Twas hard to realize on this snug side the mute horizon, that beyond it hostile armaments might steer, save from seeing in the porchway a fair woman weep with eyes on a harnessed volunteer. In haste he'd flown there, to his comely wife alone there, while marching south hard by to still her fears, for she soon would be a mother, and few messengers were known there in these campaigning years. Twas time to be good-bying, since the assembly hour was nighing, in Royal George's town at six that morn, and betwixt its wharves and this retreat were ten good miles of hying, ere ring of bugle-horn. I've laid in food, dear, and broach the spice and brood, dear, and if our July hop should antedate, let the charwench mount and gallop by the halter path and wood, dear, and fetch assistance straight. As for Bonaparte, forget him, he's not like to the land, but let him, those strike with aim who strike for wives and sons. And the war boats built to float him, twere but wanted to upset him, a slat from Nelson's guns. But to assure thee, and of creeping fears to cure thee, if he should be rumoured anchoring in the road, drive with a nurse to Kingsbere, and let nothing thence allure thee, till we've him safe bestowed. Now to turn to marching matters, I've my knapsack, firelock, spatters, crossbelts, priming horn, stock, bayonet, blackball, clay, pouch, magazine, flints, flint box, that at every quick step clatters, my heart, dear, that must stay. With breathings broken, farewell was kissed unspoken, and they parted there as morning stroked the panes, and the volunteer went on and turned and twirled his glove for token, and took the coastward lanes. When above Hep Hills he found him, he saw on gazing round him the barrow beacon burning, burning low, as if perhaps uplighted ever since he'd homeward bound him, and it meant expect the foe. Leaving the byway and following swift the highway, car and chariot met he faring fast inland. He's anchored, soldier, shouted some. God save thee, marching thy way, thou'lt front him on the strand. He slowed, he stopped, he paltered, a while with self, and faltered. Why courting misadventure shoreward roam? To Molly, surely, seek the woods with her till times have altered. Charity favors home. Else my denying, he would come she'll read as lying. Think the barrow beacon must have met my eyes, that my words were not unawareness but deceit of her while trying my life to jeopardize. At home is stocked provision, and to-night, without suspicion, we might bear it with us to a covert near. Such sin, to save a childing wife, would earn it Christ's remission, though none forgive it here. While thus he thinking, a little bird, quick drinking, among the crowfoot tufts the river bore, was tangling in their stringy arms, and fluttered, well-nigh sinking, near him upon the moor. He stepped in, reached, and seized it, and preening had released it, but that a thought of holy writ occurred, and signs divine ere battle, till it seemed him heaven had pleased it as guide to send him the bird. O oh Lord, direct me, doth duty now expect me to march a coast, or guard my weak ones near? Give this bird a flight according, that I thence know to elect me, the southward, or the rear. He loosed his clasp, when rising, the bird, as if surmising, bore due southward, crossing by the froom. 
and durn over great field and fort the soldier clear advising prompted he wist by whom then on he panted by grim my dawn and slanted up the steep ridgeway hearkening betwixt wiles till nearing coast and harbour he beheld the shoreline planted with foot and horse for miles mistrusting not the omen he gained the beach where yeomen militia fencibles and pikemen bold with regulars in thousands were en masse to meet the foemen whose fleet had not yet shoaled captain and colonel seer generals ensigns vernal were there of neighbour natives michel smith meggs bingham gambier cunningham roused by the hue nocturnal swoop on their land and kith but bonaparte still tarried his project had miscarried at the last hour equipped for victory the fleet had paused his subtle combinations had been parried by british strategy homeward returning anon no beacons burning no alarms the volunteer in modest bliss te deum sang with wife and friends we praise thee lord discerning that thou hast helped in this End of section 22